So welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for the self-advocacy workshop. Um, this workshop is presented by Kit Kelleher from the Office of Disability Services and she is a learning specialist there and has been very, very helpful in um, putting on these workshops with us. My name is Melissa Rogers. For those who don't know me, I'm the Student Activity Officer for the Multicultural Student Center. Um, and our department, along with the Office of Disability Services, has been collaborating this semester on different academic workshops and life skills that students have told us they would need a little more help on or they just wanted more information on. And so these workshops are hopefully providing you with some tools and resources to get you through not only this semester, but your whole time at Bristol. Um, so I don't want to take up too much time, but I'll give the floor over to Kit. Thank you so much. So what I'm going to do right now, just to even get started, because the last time we had some major tech issues. So Melissa and I have, we, we've had a backup plan for the backup plan for the backup plan. So we're really hoping and praying that everything goes well. But I'm, I do have my earphones in today <coughs> because there's construction going on and I could hear it really, really loud. Um, hopefully you won't hear it. Hopefully everything is okay. But I just a thumbs up if if I sound if I'm coming across okay with sound. Thumbs up, excellent. Um, it is great having you guys here. And for for those who are watching this as a recording, um, I wanted to just share a little bit first of all before I um, introduce myself. Just a little bit. Um, we did a, a session. Um, earlier in October about time management. So we're kind of making this kind of like a, um, a series, strategies for success series. Doesn't mean it's gonna end this fall. We might think of other things to do in the spring or we, we might repeat things in the spring, but we are recording these in hopes that maybe these can also be used in some of the classes or for discussion points. Um, so our first session that we had earlier in October was on time management, and actually we had staff that showed up to that as well, and what was really cool is they got some really cool tips. So some of our staff might be using some of the tips that I shared on time management. Um, so this one is on the art, and it is an art because it takes practice and time on self-advocacy, but the word self is really what we're going to focus on today is yourself because you are the most important part of your Bristol experience. And we want to make sure that you get what you need, that you advocate for what you need while you're here at Bristol. But all of these types of strategies, the tools that you use, they're not just about Bristol, they're lifelong habits. And that's the whole idea behind this. So um, like Melissa mentioned, my name is Kit Kelleher and I do not want my title or the office that I work for deter or make you shy away from anything because this has nothing to do with anything related to disabilities or learning challenges or anything like this. This is about just lifelong habits. Um, we all could use ideas and supports and strategies. So I'm really hoping that you'll take that as just another tool for you to put in your own student toolbox that you can use at Bristol. If you continue on, use it elsewhere as well as in your life. So I'm really, really happy to be here. Um, I am an executive function coach on top of working for Bristol. I also um, teach at another university, but I'm also an executive function coach and I work with students and adults kind of with like life coach strategies. So a lot of the things that I'm doing with these um, little mini workshops um, is what I do also as another role in my life. So a lot of this information is based on a lot of the experiences I've had with that. And I don't think I shared that in my time management um, workshop. So I wanted to share it today for those of you. So what I'm gonna do is I have a presentation here and what we'll be doing, and this worked out really nicely before is as we are recording this, we'll be uploading it so it will have captions. But as you get the link to this recording, you're also going to get a resource handout that will go with this. So even though you won't quite get it today because I'll need to adjust it a little bit, you will be getting a resource that goes with this. So I'm giving you some great links from Bristol 
some of those common links of where to go for extra supports and services, as well as some of the information from this particular presentation. So you'll be getting that as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and focus on self. And while I'm talking, if at all you have any questions or comments, please use the chat box. Melissa's going to be kind of be monitoring that chat box. She'll be adding some information, maybe some links, but she'll also kind of stop me along the way um, if we have any questions that need to be answered or just comments. And we welcome those who are joining us. Please chime in because remember, it's about you. This is about yourself and making the best you possible. So when we think of, and of course my thing is not working right now, when we think about self, we can kind of think of three things that are really, really important related to ourselves. Self-advocacy, self-determination, and self-regulation. The one thing they all have in common is the word self, but they also can be very different, but yet they're really connected. So it's almost like you can't have one without the other. So even though this presentation talked about self-advocacy as the title, we really kind of dive into all of these things as we're talking and you'll, you'll see why. So before we get into a little bit of fun, because I am going to make this interactive for you and I invite you to, to join me in the interaction. You don't have to, but I invite you to. Um, let's talk about what self-advocacy means. And I I'm giving you a little bit of a math problem here, but it's addition, so it's okay. It's very, very simple addition. It's simply communication and your needs. And when we add those together, that equals self-advocacy. So when you are able to communicate your own needs, you are self-advocating. It doesn't matter if it's in school, in your personal life, in relationships, with friends, at the store, it doesn't matter. Whenever you're communicating your own needs, that is your own self-advocacy. I have to admit, even though I help other people do this, one area I'm not great with is in relationships. I could definitely do a better job with my own self-advocacy when it comes to relationships. And I'm very well aware of that, but it's a process. So as you're going through this information today, if you're even thinking to yourself, God, I'm just not good at this. That's okay. One step at a time. One simple step at a time. Don't beat yourself up over anything. In my time management um, workshop that I gave, I kept saying, start simple. Start with the simplest thing first. Do what is easiest for you first. The other things start to fall into play. So let's take a look at a poll. So I'm going to activate a poll right now. And it's how do you advocate for yourself? And Melissa, are you able to activate the poll for me by any chance? I think I can. So let me try to press on it. Let me know if you can see it. That would be awesome. So I'd like to know and I invite you, you don't have to but I invite you. Yep, we can see it. How do you how do you advocate for yourself? And what's great about this quiz you can check as many of the answers as you want. So I'm just going to take a few seconds. And let's see. And I have to put my eyeballs on. I forgot to put my eyeballs on. Oh, there we go. So if you, if you don't want to participate, totally fine. Just take a look at the answers and see what you have here. So let's just give about maybe 10 more seconds. All right. And Melissa, you should be able to end the poll and then show the results, although we can kind of see the results right here, but you should be able to end it and then show results. And as we can see, it looks like asking questions, knowing yourself, asking for help, seeking out resources were the top ones. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with knowing yourself and knowing what helps or hurts, because I think that's where we need to begin. Because if you don't know what you need, if you don't know what you want, if you don't know what helps you, and if you don't know what even hurts you or challenges you, how do you know what questions to ask? So the fact that 
you feel comfortable in knowing yourself, I think is phenomenal. So thank you for that. So we can go ahead and stop sharing that. This is this really just kind of gives me a really good idea to see how people feel about um, themselves. So Melissa's going to go ahead and I actually I was able to stop sharing. So that's good. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and see what the definitions are for self advocacy. Understanding your needs knowing what kind of support might help because we won't know till we try. So even if we seek help or seek a support, we might find out it doesn't help, but that's okay. Even seeking it out is part of self-advocacy. And then communicating with others what those needs are. And I didn't make this up. There's a lot of research about this, but there's a really great article. Melissa, if you could put that link in our chat from this slide, there is a phenomenal website called understood.org. And it's a website I use a lot in my teachings. And like I said, I'm an instructor at another university, but I use this website a lot. I get tons of resources on all kinds of things, you know, learning, learning challenges, where to seek support, things like that. And this was just a really cool article. So I invite you to look at that article at your leisure, share it with someone who you think might need it, okay? I just need to move for one second. I just need to move my screen. So one of the interesting things is self-advocacy in college is a lot different than what we were used to when we were younger. You know, in college, we're now the grownups. We're now the adults. We're the ones making the decisions. So if you have already noticed, and maybe you haven't, I've started using the power of three in this because I think when you give information in threes, it's a lot easier to remember. I think when you throw information at people, it's like, whoa, it, it just doesn't happen. So a lot of the information I'm giving you is in threes today. So you can remember some of the key elements. So I have three key pieces of information about the shifts in how we advocate for students from high school to college. And as you can see, parents or guardians or the teachers are really the people who are advocating for the students in high school or K through 12 education. Completely shifts and all of that becomes now the college student's responsibility. Even our students who come to college at the age of say 16 or 17, maybe they're dual enrolled or maybe they graduated early and then started college early. Once they are accepted as a college student, they advocate for themselves, even if they haven't hit that magic birthday of 18. So once you are in college, you are the advocator for yourself. It's no longer about your parents advocating for you. It's no longer about the school saying, you know, we think the student has, I'm just, I'm going to use like a learning challenge. I, I am just self-disclosing that I have a learning challenge. You know, my teacher is not going to come to me and say, hey, I think that you might have, you know, issues with reading and I might have some supports for you. No, this is now about the student identifying if they have some difficulties or some challenges and seeking out the resources that could help them. It's no longer about the, the teacher going to the student to say, hey, listen, here's a tutoring center. I think you should go to this. I think you should sign up for research help at the library. Mm -mm. Now it's about the student seeking out that support. And it doesn't mean that your instructors or professors aren't open to helping you, but they're not going to come to you they're going to kind of wait and have you come to them and then they can maybe provide that that additional help. Let me just stop right there and see if anybody has any questions or comments. Not at this time. Totally cool. All right. So now we get to play a game. Okay. So I'm going to invite you to play a game. You need your chat box for this. And all you need to do, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is either write the letter T for true or the letter F 
for false based on the statements that you're going to see. Okay, so T for true and F for false. And I'm going to open up my chat box so I can see because I'm so bad when it comes to multitasking. Oh, I don't even know if I can see my chat box right now. Oh, here, wait, hold on. Give me, oh, you did not just see that answer. You did not just see that answer. No, you did not. Okay, I'm trying to, I have the chat box now. Okay, so while in class, you raise your hand to ask to use the restroom. Just pretend you didn't see the answer. And what would you put in the chat box? So I invite you to, to play along. You don't have to, but I invite you to. And I see some falses in our chat box. <laughs> and you're absolutely right. Um, anybody have any idea why this is not self-advocacy in college? Asking to raise your hand to use the bathroom when you're, you're in bio 101 or bio 111. Why is that not self-advocacy? Any ideas? I'm sorry, I misunderstood the question. I put um, true because I recall every single time I wanted to leave class to go use the restroom, I would have to raise my hand. So I apologize, I misunderstood the question. It's, You're asking whether that is a form of self-advocacy, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Oh, okay. But you okay. know what? But your situation is really interesting because that was gonna be part of my response. So I mm -hmm. appreciate that because yes, there could be some instructors that just out of respect, they might just mm -hmm. want you to give like a little signal that you're, you know, getting up to leave because you might have a small class or you're in the middle of a lab or you're in the middle of a, a project, you know, but technically we're all adults here, right? Mm -hmm. And I think as an adult, we don't really need to tell when we have those biological needs, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's really no one's business, right? Mm -hmm. um, so generally we wouldn't consider this self-advocacy, but it is interesting you're just being respectful. You're just following what the instructor asked you to do, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, that is a really interesting point. So I'm actually really glad that you brought that up. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, let's try the next one. You email your instructor to ask for clarifications about an assignment, true or false, as to whether you think that is self-advocacy. Okay, go ahead and post your answers. Let's see what you come up with. I'm gonna try not to hit the answer. Do I see a true? I see another true. All right, let's see. You're absolutely right. This, this is blatant self-advocacy. Number one, you're reaching out to your instructor. Number two, you're asking questions because you apparently don't understand, or maybe you didn't get really good directions. Don't always assume that just because you have to reach out to your instructor or your professor about an assignment that it's you don't assume you are the reason you're not getting it okay perhaps you did not get clear directions perhaps in the syllabus there wasn't a rubric or you know it was something from last semester and it doesn't align with this semester i always tell my students if you are asking me that question, chances are someone else in your class has the exact same question. You just happen to be the first person that asked it. And it lets me know as an instructor, hey, either I didn't do a really good job explaining this, or hey, I just need to explain it again. And that really doesn't take a lot of time. But this is definitely a wonderful form of self-advocacy. And it's probably one of the top, you know, top suggestions and we're gonna to get to that. We're gonna get some tips from a professor and tips from a student. And those are real tips from real professors and real students about how to best advocate for yourself. And this is one of those top ones. So I'm really glad that you guys feel that way. Okay, next one. These might be a little tricky. Your academic advisor, who you know, they know their stuff, right? They sign you up for 15 credits this semester just so you can graduate on time because we know that's important. You don't think you're gonna be able to handle five classes so you ask to drop two of the classes hmm. is that a form of self-advocacy what do you think all right 
I'm seeing some truths. Let's see. You got it. Ding, 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 ding. Isn't it nice when you can get all of these in? Don't you wish every quiz you could get hundreds like this? Don't you just wish? This is absolutely self-advocacy. Even if you are searching um, support and guidance from someone else on campus, a financial advisor, an academic advisor, someone in library learning commons, yes, that's their skill. That's their area of expertise. But you are the expert of yourself. They are not experts of you. They might know about what classes need to be taken for this particular major or how much time it might take before you can graduate or get a certificate, but they are not the expert of you. You need to let them know if five classes is too much, it's okay if it's too much. It's okay to let them know, I, I don't think I'll be able to do this. There's no way I could have done taken five classes in my freshman year in college, no way. Um, and I know a lot of people did. I was able to build up later on, but there's no way I could have done it in the beginning. I could not have kept up with all of that. But I have a feeling I would have been scared to tell someone that. Um, so I'm glad that you guys felt that that was true. Okay, next one. Let's see if this trips you up a little bit. Your parents tell you to sign up for 15 credits so you can graduate on time, but you don't think you'll be able to handle classes so you just go ahead and register for three classes with your advisor's help. Is that a form of self-advocacy, true or false? Aha, I'm seeing more truth. Boy, you guys really think you're smart on this, don't you? And you are, you're absolutely right. Again, who is the adult making the decisions in college now? The college student. It is the college student's decisions. Not only is this a form of self-advocacy, but this is also a form of self-determination. So do you remember the three clouds I showed you at the very beginning? Self-advocacy, self-determination, and self-regulation. This right here, you reaching out to someone, you making that final decision, despite what other people are telling you to do, you making that decision, not only is self-advocacy, but is also self-determination. So self-determination is when you go ahead and make those decisions to help your life, okay? So that this fits both of those areas. So I'm really glad that you, you felt that this was true. You receive a poor grade on an exam, and now you've asked your parents to reach out and talk to the professor. Is this a form of self-advocacy, true or false? Okay, seeing a little bit of a split here. This one is a little bit tricky. It definitely is because you are reaching out and asking for help, but it's false. So let's go back and think about that slide where we talked about high school versus college and the adults in our life who helped make our decisions like our parents and the teachers. But in college, it's now about the college student making those decisions. It's okay if we talk to our parents or our guardian or a friend or a counselor about our poor grades. But if we need to address our grades, the professors talk to the students about that. We don't have parent-teacher conferences anymore in college. So we really need to think about, you know, what is it that we're, we're asking about? If we didn't like our grade or if we were unsure about our exam, the only one that our professor is even gonna talk about is to the student. And that has to go along with, with some of the policies, including FERPA which is our Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. It's, it's really about, you know, our, in, our professors, our instructors, other personnel at the college, they're not allowed to talk about certain things with parents or guardians or other people unless there's specific circumstances. So when it comes to an exam, it's really between the student and the professor. Any questions about that? And I have to give everyone an A on that little quiz there. So any questions about any of these items related to self-advocacy? 
No, thank you for playing along. I really appreciate that. I'm just going to close my chat and I'm going to let Melissa go ahead. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I have a couple more. Oh, I'm so sorry. We're not done. Keep your A on hold because we're not done. Okay. You need financial assistance. So you fill out a care fund form to ask for help. Sorry, totally forget about this. So I'm going to have to put that little chat box back on. And I'm seeing some truths and you're absolutely right. If you are not familiar with our care team and our care fund, I'm going to have Melissa put a link in the chat box for you related to that. There's a care team that can help our students with supports if there's some academic issues. There's also a care fund if students are feeling like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit strapped for things, maybe textbooks, something like that. You can fill out a form and this is all a part of advocating for yourself. So whenever you're reaching out, even if it's not directly with a person, but you're reaching out to a department or you're filling out a form for something, that's all a part of both self-advocacy and self-determination because you've made the decision to do so to help yourself. And that's what it's all about. I totally wasn't done with this test, was I? Someone was not paying attention. Okay. I think maybe I'm not sure. Melissa's probably knows if this is the last one. I don't remember, but okay. So here's another one. You feel like a peer is targeting you in class with the way he talks about you during small group, group discussion. So maybe you have like a Zoom chat or a breakout room and there's some weird conversations going on, but the instructor really doesn't know because they're not in the breakout room with you. You decide to contact the Title IX office for advice. And that is... Um, that's the office that talks about discrimination, civil rights, things like that. Do you think this is a form of self-advocacy? And this is our last question. So I see some truths going on and you're absolutely right. So anytime you are reaching out to one of our departments or, or any kind of a department in an institution, an organization, a business, most businesses have human resource departments. Um, but whenever you're reaching out for these departments, looking for resources, looking for support, looking for advice, this is all a part of self-advocacy. Okay, now you all get the A. Okay, now you all get the A. Any questions before we continue on? And I just wanna look at our time. Perfect, we're doing, we're doing absolutely perfect. Any questions or comments? Just say that um, I think that was a really great thing to do because sometimes it's hard to conceptualize what self advocacy is. So seeing a situation and seeing whether you're advocating for yourself or not is a lot was at least a lot easier for me to comprehend than somebody just giving me the definition. So I and I appreciate that because you know there is absolutely nothing wrong with us seeking support from a parent, a guardian, a family member. That is a part of self-advocacy, definitely. But when it comes to college, they can't do it for you. Maybe they can be with you, but they can't do it for you. And so you doing it for yourself is that self-advocacy part. And then you following through with the decision to change something, do something, fill out a form, that's a part of that self-determination. So I'm really glad that that helped with that. It's kind of, it's a little cloudy. That's why I put those definitions in clouds because it can be a little cloudy sometimes. Any other comments or questions? No? So since we had a couple of examples of self-determination, I thought I would give a few more examples of really what self-determination and self-regulation are because I think it's really important for us to recognize that when we speak up for ourselves and when we communicate for ourselves. We know we're advocating for ourselves, but what exactly are we doing with self-determination? So this has to do with when we make our own choices from what we eat at breakfast time to what classes we want to take, to what trip we want to go on, to how much money we want to spend, even though we might not have much money in our bank account and the bills are due. Making your own choices, that's a part of self-determination. Determining for yourself what you want and what you need. And what you want and what you need aren't always the same thing, but how you make those choices, that's self-determination. 
having the freedom to be you. So as an adult, being able to make these choices, that's also part of self-determination. It's not about that advisor saying to you, well, I really do think you should take those 15 credits. I don't care that you have a 40 hour a week job and that you have three kids and you're taking care of a sick brother. You need to do it. Mm -mm. You have the freedom and the right. This is part of your student rights to make these decisions. So just know that and be comfortable with that. But here's this part, and this is the interesting part, is no matter what those choices are, there's that responsibility, is making sure that you own that responsibility for those decisions that you make. And we don't always make all the right choices. Proof positive right here. I don't always make the best decisions for myself. I don't always make the best choices. I have to just be honest with myself and say, okay, that wasn't a good choice. I'm going to leave it behind and I'm going to start fresh today. I'm going to hit the reset button and start over. And I'm going to try and get some advice about the next best step to take. So taking responsibility for your actions is just as important. So let's see how self-regulation is very similar to this. So let's take a look about self-regulation. Now, let's see if we, we talked about choices and actually the action of making the choices with self-determination, but in self-regulation, now it's about the emotions, the behaviors, and the reactions that we make when we make those choices or when we do something for ourselves. It's about the control that you have over those emotions and behaviors especially when things don't go planned or when there's a glitch or there's a challenge. Melissa and I had a terrible time. I mean, terrible time with technology two weeks ago. Literally anything that could go wrong did. Our computers froze. We couldn't show things. I mean, it was awful. And we, you know, instead of like, Ugh, it, we just told everybody, hey, we're going to have to do this again. You know, it was out of our control, but our emotions were our control. And we just decided, let's do this again. So we re-recorded it again and it came out great. So how we react when things don't go our way, that's also a part of that self-regulation. And then finally, taking that responsibility. So even if we act a certain way or we have an emotion that maybe isn't the most positive, by at least taking responsibility for that choice and that emotion, that's also a part of that self-regulation. So it's really just kind of being honest with ourself. Um, I'm, I'm gonna stop right here and I'm just gonna, before I show tips from a college instructor, I'm curious if anybody has any like experiences related to any of those things where they were like, oh yeah, you know, my emotions really weren't the best or I really did make a great choice about something and I'm really proud of myself. Does anybody have a story to share? My entire 20s was like that. I'm just going to be turning 30 on Friday. So it's like happy birthday. my entire, thank you. My entire 20s, uh, my 20s, um, all the way from the age of probably 12, all the way up until the age of We'll say 27, because mm -hmm. I think 27 was the age that I kind of started to figure out, hey, this is no longer a joke. You know, it's not funny anymore. You can't just do that. Um, where a lot of my emotions were not regulated. Um, unfortunately, um, there was never ever a parent or a guardian in my life that actually advocated for me. Mm -hmm. So I had to actually learn that from the ground up. Um, so it's like, I didn't know that lashing out or saying mean, rude things to people, um, was not, you know, the right method to use. I was only, I only thought about me, the world revolved around me. It was just me, 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 me. So, um, when I finally hit, you know, 25, 26, 27, that's when I started realizing that my choices actually do hold consequences and those consequences can be very grave. Um, so throughout my entire life, um, I never ever understood my need. And even sometimes I still don't, but I, I'm doing a lot better. 
Um, I don't immediately jump on the first emotion that comes to mind for anything. Um, I do take a moment to pray and, um, you know, try to regain control of myself before I decide to even answer anymore. Nice. Wow. I just, you know, I, I don't have my, my emoticon, but I would give you a happy face, a thumbs up. Uh, I, I saw um, Kaylee you. Had, a, had a little celebratory hat that she put on her thing. Um, I, I want to applaud you. Thank you for sharing your experience. Um, you know, you had mentioned role model, you know, it, it, it is, it's a process and it's, it, it does, it, it takes time. And you brought up another point that I mentioned back in my earlier October session about the brain, where the front part of the brain that has all of those emotions and decision-making um, components in our brain is not fully developed until our 20s. So we come to college out of high school. If we started college right after high school, we're still super duper immature. But if we mm -hmm. come to college a little bit later in life, but we didn't have those role models in place, we really didn't know how to regulate ourselves and advocate for ourselves because we didn't have those structures in our life. And I just, I, I'm not going to go too far off, but I do want to share that if you're ever interested and you did not listen to the valedictorian speech um, in May of this year, 2021, um, Katie Haley provided a beautiful um, valedictorian speech on how she got to Bristol, how she graduated mm -hmm. Bristol and the supports in her life and how she had to learn and grow into self-advocacy. Um, she mm -hmm. and I ended up meeting this summer and started doing a couple of things together. And I, I really wish I had met her sooner in life, but um, you, you kind of emulate that. So thank you thank so you. much. Amanda. I really appreciate it. Thank anybody, you. Anybody else want to share? It's kind of sensitive and I understand, but I, I do appreciate it. So in, in moving on, I, we did a presentation, my department, my teammates, we did a presentation in August for some new students. And um, it was really nice because Kate O'Hara, who is now, you know, oversees our SSEM, our, our student support um, services department. It's, it's a big department that houses a lot of other departments at our college. She spoke to our students and it was interesting because a lot of the things that she said I've read in other research and I've read from other colleges. So um, it's nice that when you hear something in more than one place because it kind of validates. So this happens to come from a college instructor and I'm just gonna leave it at that, okay? Um, but and it, no, it's not me, okay? But it does come from a college instructor, but I just think these are valid because this is actually, think of this as one of your professors sharing how they would like their students to advocate for themselves while in school. Read and gather your resources. I don't think sometimes we take our syllabus um, seriously enough and we need to because so many of the answers are in there, including how to email the instructor, what textbooks to use, the dates of things. They might even let you know that, hey, I'm going to be flexible with due dates. Um, so you don't have to feel nervous, but you need to email me first. Or if there's an emergency, please let me know by texting me. I give my students I shouldn't say this out loud, but I'm being recorded, but I, I give my students my phone number and I say, if, if there's an emergency, text me, let me know, because I know that you're going to be very frustrated and you're not going to feel good until you let me know what's going on. So that's, you know, your resources in like your syllabus and knowing your instructor's emails are so important early on in your semester. Ask questions when you don't understand. That's a whole part of it. What is it that you're having trouble with? Get to know yourself. What are you having difficulty with? Those are those questions that you need to ask. And your instructors are there for that reason. They're not there to sit at a blank screen. They're not there to sit in an empty classroom. They're there to help. They're there to give you their passion and their experience, but they're also to help, there to help you succeed. Go to office hours. This is probably one of the most underutilized points that I think most instructors would tell you, myself included, very few students ever come to my office hours. So now I've made my office hours 
as needed. Like if you need an office hour, let me know when and let's come up with a time together. That's that's something I've done with my students. I'm not saying that's a Bristol thing. That's what I do because I work at a, at a different location. But instructors hours, if they meet every Monday from nine to 1030 and you have a test coming up in two days, huh, what a perfect opportunity to go and ask questions. Even if there's other students there, they're all there for the same reason. So use that time. Every instructor should have instructor's hours. So use them. They don't want, they, they get lonely. They want, they want to say hi. Um, please get support in any way you can, whether it's written, drop in online tutoring, the writing center, make an appointment with tutor track, make an appointment with thinking storm. There's so many different avenues for getting academic support. I think some of the best ways is just to ask your instructor, do they have some ideas for tutoring? Because some of them have tutors that they are aware can help with a subject that might not be on the tutor track list or might be able to just kind of fill in for a little bit. So ask your instructors if they have any great ideas for tutoring, okay? But um, is there a study group that you can form while you are in class? Get together some of your peers. I was talking with someone this morning who was getting together with peers and they were meeting on a Sunday to do a Zoom class for like a role play session. Find your voice and don't give up. That's one of the top things. You and yourself. Remember, self is the most important part of this whole presentation. You and yourself are what's most important. Do not give up on yourself because your instructors and your the people around you, like Melissa, like myself, we're not here to give up on you. We will be here to help you in any way that we can. So now tips from a college student. Melissa, do I have a link to this one? Is there a, a link for an article on this one? Yeah, I'll share it now. Okay, awesome. So there is a link from a college student, and I believe it's a Boston University college student who talks about um, experiences in self-advocating for herself. So these tips do come from that article. And some of those tips include understanding your own strengths and challenges. And when we did our poll at the very beginning of this session, I loved that those who um, participated said that they know themselves. They know what helps them. They know what hurts them. So knowing your strengths and challenges is so important. If you know that you're a pretty good reader, but writing is a little bit difficult, you might need to go to the writing center. Maybe math is not your area, but it's more of the reading problems in the math that is, that is difficult for you. So knowing those strengths and challenges is gonna better help you try and figure out where you need to get that support. Know the resources that are around you that are, that are there to help. Bristol has so many resources and so many departments. And now when you go on the main page and you go into the search button, Hawk Talk, which is a chat bot. So it's, it's a computerized chat system. But when you type in some keywords, Hawk Talk can kind of help guide you to certain areas. But sometimes when we're in a frenzy, when we're really upset, sometimes doing all that stuff we get too frenzied to even know what to ask. We're not even sure what to look up. So what I've done is at the end of this presentation, I have um, given a list of some of the very common resources that tend to be used more widely at Bristol. And I have the direct link to all of those services or departments. And I'll be sharing that with um, the link to this recording know that it's okay to speak up for yourself. That's why we're doing this whole presentation. We want people to speak up. We want people to advocate and ask questions. Find a group or community to reach out to. If you have the Bristol app, you know that's a great place that you can go and ask questions. And from there, you might even find other groups and other supports to help. You might form one with someone that has a, a like mind as you or similar interests as you and maybe you'll create your own outreach group for yourself know your rights and responsibilities when we did that when we were playing our game and we talked about the student feeling very uncomfortable with another student during like a chat a small group discussion we talked about the title nine office so if you're feeling like maybe your your rights um you're maybe feeling discriminated against, you know, we do have our Title IX office where you can talk with someone about that or you can file a complaint. 
you have those rights, it's okay. Not only is that self-advocacy, but that self-determination. So I highly recommend that. I'm looking at our time now, and I'm, I'm gonna ask you this. Um, since we have just a small group, I wanted to know if my, my group that's here today, if they wanted to do a little role play or if they wanted to hear me and Melissa do a little role play because we're, we're open to either. So what, what would you like? Would you like to hear the role play or would you like to be a part of the role play? So go ahead and just either let us know verbally or let us know in the chat what you would prefer and we're, we're okay with either. Uh, it's pretty echoey here, so I'll have you and Melissa do it. <laughs> that is fine. So Amanda, are you okay if M Melissa and I do it? I am. Sorry, my 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 kids are just kind of hungry. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> sorry, they're advocating for themselves. Okay, they're hungry. Oh yeah, <laughs> but they don't know how to regulate their emotions because that the is food true. Is so we got. So we have to work on that. You're absolutely right. That is so funny. So Melissa. So Melissa and I are going to, and Melissa and I have already done a little bit of a practice. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a really short scene here. We're going to do two of them, but they're both super duper short because we'd love a little bit of your input with this. So the very first one is between an advisor and a student. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to stop sharing because I have my cheat sheet that I need to look at. So I'm just going to go ahead and look at my cheat sheet for just a minute. So hold on one second. Okay, Melissa, do you have your cheat sheet ready? I do, I'm ready. <laughs> okay, so in this particular scenario, um, there is an advisor who has met with a student to help them sign up for classes. And so, um, you know, the student is, is really kind of feeling unsure about things right now. So this is our very quick role play and you're gonna give us your feedback. So, okay, let's take one. Melissa, you're on. You want me to be the student? Yeah, I, you're, no, you're, oh, you're the student? Oh, yeah, I can be the advisor. I forgot, Mo, I forgot, Melissa's going to be the student. I'm the advisor. Forgive me. I totally forgot our roles. Okay. Oh, Melissa, it is great um, meeting you today. I am so excited to talk about your spring semester. And it looks like you need about 36 more credits to graduate. So let's sign you up for these five classes that go with your major. And um, that'll put you on the track to graduate in time, just like we had talked before. How do you feel about that? Thanks for meeting with me today. I really do appreciate it. I've been thinking, I know my parents really want me to take the 15 credits so I can graduate and then transfer. But with my job, I think that's just too much for me right now. I'd like to just take three classes in the spring and then maybe take one or two in the summer if I can handle it. Okay, great. And cut. So, brief scenario. How did Melissa do in advocating for herself with her advisor and talking about classes that she'd like to sign up for? How, what would you say about Melissa's advocacy? I think she did a good job because she even had like a plan too to do it. Like I'm gonna do this right now and then later on I'm gonna do this. So I think she had a good plan. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Ditto. I was gonna say, I think she did good. <laughs> Excellent. So yeah, so she came in um, not only sharing a, a little bit of a discomfort, right, with taking five classes, but she had like a backup plan. So not only was it self-advocacy, would you also call it self-determination? Yeah. And did she present herself well, like she was an all huffy puffy, right? Yeah. So Melissa. I don't think Melissa has the ability to be huffy puffy. She's really not a huffy puffy person, but. She's not. <laughs> no, but, you know, huffy puffy does happen. So we're just glad that she didn't do it. Okay, let's try another one. Melissa's gonna be the student again. So let's try, it's gonna be very, very short. So this is now between an instructor and a student and this, the instructor has office hours and there's a test coming up. There's a midterm coming up in a couple of days and there's office hours and the student has decided to join the office hours. So um, 
Let me just get my script up. Here we go. Hey there. Hi, hey, Melissa. I'm so glad that you could drop by on during our Zoom office hours. I'm here. So how can I help you today? I don't get the stuff. I feel like I study it, but it just doesn't stick. Oh, okay. Thanks for sharing. Um, were you able to review the study guide or watch the video that I shared? Yeah. Um, can you tell me specifically what you're having trouble understanding? All of it. And I have to go in like five minutes for my job. Okay. And cut. Okay. First of all, Melissa, Academy Award on that one. So I said the same thing. That was good. <laughs> so what what's missing for self-advocacy here? Her desire. Desire. She doesn't have, yeah, she doesn't have any um there's no um desire. Like it almost sounds like it's just a script. <laughs> kind <Okay>. of, right? <laughs> so do you think it sounds like she was expecting the instructor to know what was wrong? Mm -hmm. And what she yep. needed to study and like the instructor was supposed to be like mind reading why she was there that would be a great instructor i'll tell you that it wouldn't it though yeah <laughs> but yes <laughs> okay so yeah a anything else that you can think of like what <laughs> what what could <laughs> melissa have done to better advocate for herself I was thinking like going into it, having a plan of like what she's having trouble with. So that way the professor does know what she's struggling with. Exactly. Yep. So office hours are cool, but if a, if a professor or an instructor only has an hour, you know, are they gonna be, go, be able to go through the last two weeks worth of work? Probably not. But if they're able to really kind of hone in on a couple of major topics or a math problem or, or you know, just one basic topic, that's gonna to be a lot easier to address in that short amount of time. And it's gonna be up to the student to be able to say, hey, this is what I'm not understanding, or this is what I came to get help with. So yeah, so if Melissa had maybe come with a plan and was able to better identify what she was having trouble with, um, what about at the very end when she mentioned that she needed to go? If we talk about self-regulation, what, how did that like not fit into the plan? It sounded like that there was no dedication. Um, I mean, like, like, like there is a, a form of dedication in there, right? She has dedication to her job, but for the respect of, you know, school, there didn't sound like that there was any dedication to school. Like, hey, yeah, I've only got five minutes, so do your best, you know? It's like, it, it's yeah. not helpful. I like your input. You know, it goes back almost to the other one that we talked about before with time management. She didn't manage her time well. If she thought in five minutes, the instructor was gonna read her mind and help her with a midterm. Yeah, that wasn't good planning, was it? So a lot of things went wrong there, didn't it? but hopefully it kind of gave you a good sense of good advocacy versus not so great advocacy at all. So looking at our time, first of all, I really want to thank you guys for showing, you know, showing just your ideas and your experiences and participating. I have just a couple of things left that I want to share with you that I will be providing along with this recording. And these are just some final reflections. And this is another article. Um, the link, Melissa is going to go ahead and put it inside of our um, chat box. And these are just some final reflections to understand that advocating for yourself is a process. So kind of like Amanda had mentioned earlier, you know, and I mentioned it too, I self-disclosed that my self-advocacy related to relationships isn't great. It's a process I'm still in even after all of these years. So, you know, work on something that you feel more comfortable advocating for yourself with and work on that first. Focus on that. Don't think that you have to do everything at once. It really does take time. Know what's reasonable and how to ask for it. Melissa going to office hours and expecting everything to be done in five minutes isn't reasonable. You know, So make that plan, figure out what it is that you need or don't understand 
And I think this is important. Recognizing how you ask for help is just as important as what you ask for help. Please and thank yous go a really long way with just about everybody. So I think that's really important. And you may need to ask more than once. If you don't hear from your instructor when you asked a question about that assignment, email again, okay? Maybe they didn't get it. Maybe it went to their spam file. Maybe they got so overwhelmed with emails, they just missed things. That's, that's just human error. Ask again, it's okay. Understand that when there is a problem, there's always at least one solution for that. But you might need supports. You might need to seek supports or other people to help you find those solutions and invest in yourself. That's really, really important. So these come from an article, again, from Boston University that Melissa shared in our, um, in our chat. And finally, I'm just ending. These are going to be resources that I will be sharing with you. And they're underlined because they are directly linked to the resources that are very commonly used, especially when we're talking about advocating for ourselves, whether it's financial aid, health services, instructional technology. I think we've all been dealing with instru instructional technology issues for the last 18 months. So, you know, I know that they've been really busy tutoring the Veterans Center, Melissa's Multicultural Center, um, my Office of Disability Services, the Women's Center, all of these directly link to those, those areas and those departments because sometimes what we need in the very beginning for self-advocacy is just knowing where to go and then we can better advocate for ourselves. So that's really it for me in our session. And I really, really wanna thank you guys for your time. Um, I am more than willing to stay on for a couple of minutes if you have any questions and this would probably be a good time for us to end our recording. Melissa. And I just want to say thank you to, to you both for, for joining Melissa for recording, but I will stay on if anybody has any, any questions.